Yo, it's Nick Carson. We here at Law Studios, NYC. My man Trevor DeBlas, you know, fucking culture plug. If you need the plug, you gotta go to the culture plug to get the news. That's all we gotta do. You dig? You dig? Pro error. And there's no errors in that. <laughs> I run around through the night like I'm not tired. Run around through the wife when she not fertile. Everybody in my high school sitting on me rapping. Wish we would have swapped journals. I am not the flop. I learned that when the block was hot and Lil Wayne got me thinking that I got this. A little pain gon' happen in the process, but a little change gon' happen after all that. Now I'm thinking we're back at it again. Yo 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 yo. What's Brandon, good? Brandon, what's up? Yo, what up? Here he is on um, the culture plug. Yeah, man, the fucking culture plug. You got Nick Caution in the building. Hey, what's going on? Welcome, welcome, Thank you for welcome, having welcome. me. Thank you for coming, man. We, we have my home court. We have Lost Studios, <laughs> NYC. Lost Studios. It's our home too. It's like yeah, definitely we're second all home. home. Everybody's yeah. at home Everyone's right now. Home. I'm about to take my shoes off. <laughs> <laughs> so um. Right now, we're about to speak about what's been going on. We usually it's a lot do a of shit little... going on lately. A lot of, a lot of funny shit, a lot of fuck shit. Of course. You've always. seen recently what happened with Kanye West? With him meeting mm -hmm. with Trump? Yeah, I did see How'd that. How'd you feel about that? To be honest, I think at this point, it's, it's different than it was. Because when you're supporting him, when he's running for president, it's kind of like you're supporting his cause. Now he's the president, so he's meeting with him to build a relationship like he's already the president he's not gonna not be the president there's like he's not gonna get impeached right away maybe he will eventually but he's meeting with him to maybe discuss issues about you know whatever he wants to talk about so i didn't think it was that crazy because he's already the president I, I agree with you the way i look at it right now i think the reason why Kanye said that he wanted Trump to be president, I feel like um, when a Republican is a president, mm -hmm. more people are woke. Like yeah. everybody, yeah, like couple months, right? Like couple, yeah. like couple weeks ago was the elections. We're still talking about. Everybody's still talking about politics. Yeah. Yeah. When Obama was the president, everyone was just everybody like, was chilling. Everybody's yeah. happy. We got a Democrat. Like he got it. He, he got, got it. it. Yeah. Everything is under control. They started talking when the police started killing, yeah. started mm -hmm. killing, and yeah. all of that. But other than that, nobody had no problem. Like, everyone's there, you're, you're asleep. You think it's safe. You everything know, is good so cool. in a way it's a good and a bad thing that trump became president in my yeah. opinion that's I, like my intake i see where kanye's coming from as crazy as it as mm -hmm. it sounds like everybody's woke everybody want change right now yeah and kanye's coming out of like kanye's never been the one to to like not say what he feels like he's george bush doesn't care about black people like that's that's how he felt he said it yeah and exactly. then he'll, he'll even call out obama and be like obama didn't really do that's shit. true yeah and, and a lot of people like fake follow politics and just you know they're on Twitter and they see the memes and they you know they see the videos of Obama playing basketball like Obama was was a cool dude but like he wasn't the best president he was a good president but you know like you can't just be blind and, and think just because someone smiles and is, is cool that they're they're getting shit done one reason why I feel like he wasn't the best president or they didn't like he didn't max his potential because they didn't allow him to yeah that too that's, that's why too. I felt like if Hillary was a little bit more in office they wouldn't have gave her like a little bit more leeway but mm. I feel like the I'm reason why that, you don't think Hillary wouldn't have been all right I don't know bro, bro. you're bugging so Hillary you know. has a lot she got a lot of credentials. Like, come on, you gotta, that, it, you, you gotta give it. You gotta give it to her. I mean, I wasn't really fucking with Hillary either, either, honestly. I'm not jacking that, bro. She, I, I just, I thought it was too much. Like, I think there was too many hands in her pot. I think it was like, there's too many people like endorsing her. There's too many people she has to report to. I think with Trump, he, like, I'm not pro Trump, pro Hillary either of them. But I think Trump, they didn't want him to be the president because he's he has all this money. He didn't need any endorsement. Like he, he's paying all out of pocket. He's putting it all up for himself. So who, he doesn't really have to answer to anyone. Hillary That's what I like, respected about it. You know, when you're when you're running for uh, president, you have this whole campaign. Mm -hmm. That's like millions of dollars. That Everybody campaign gotta is, like donate and yeah, stuff like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like, you have to appeal to those people. Money if goes they put, into if it. They put money into it. You, you have, have to, to do yeah, something. If, if you don't, them. they'll kill it's you. Over. Make a clone of you. So, like, so you, you feel know, like Hillary was saying certain things because of the endorsements? I think Hillary's whole thing was like a little like. I, I couldn't say it was fully genuine. Like some of her things were real, and then like you look at old things, and she's changing her mind. But 
you know, people change their minds. Oh, it's it's. I feel you. You know, I it's, don't know. I feel like she wouldn't have been better than 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 Trump. Honestly, I don't know, we man. Gotta see what he does. I mean, yeah, we got to see what he does. But I'm not gonna and front. Two, they wasn't ready for a woman president, and you guys have to admit that. Like, I don't know. They if she weren't, was the but president. I don't think she was the president. You think we were ready for a woman president? I don't think we're ready for it. But I don't. I don't think she's the woman president we're ready for. It has to be the okay. right woman. Yeah. Right. Like I'm not gonna lie, bro. Like at the end of the day, in my opinion, man. At the end of the day, Bill Clinton locked up a lot of us. A lot of people were going away on three yeah. strikes on some bullshit. Yeah, they locked Clinton, up a yeah. lot of people under the Clinton administration. I believe more so than Reagan and uh, and Bush. Mm -hmm. So I mean, at the end of the day, if that's her husband, I'm not really jacking that shit. Yeah. I feel I'm sorry. You. I think I think I'm gonna make a prediction. I think I don't know when, but I think Michelle Obama is gonna run. I hope she does. I've been Michelle I've, Obama run. That speaking of that, amazing. how'd you how'd you feel when you saw her daughter with the Pro Era T-shirt? Oh, it was, it was amazing. I think I was I might have been here. I don't remember where I was, mm -hmm. but um, she had Snapchatted a fan, and then a fan like reached out to one of us, and they're mm -hmm. like, "Yo, look at this! It's Malia Obama in a Pro Era shirt." And we're like, "What the fuck?" I think Malia, she's so popping to me. Yeah, Even yeah. When she she got, dope. got in trouble yeah. with the whole um, with the weed and with shit. the whole. You think she was really or whatever? I mean, yeah, yeah, she whatever. was really smoking. I don't think that <laughs> yeah, she was really cares? smoking. Like, but guess point. what? Then she she in Harvard right now. Like, oh yeah, didn't, yeah. yeah. I yeah. smoke a little weed and I'm in Harvard. Fuck I it. got accepted to Harvard. Like, that, that, you that just say show me you. alone, huh? Yeah, that should show you. Like, a little weed? Like, come on. It's not that serious. I mean, come on. What, what is weed really gonna... That the, it's yeah. not gonna, like, kill you. It's not gonna... I mean, you see all these that athletes... It's less of a person exactly. or afraid of a person. You like, see all these athletes actually. endorsing weed. I yeah. mean, they're saying that it's better than pills. It's better it than is, taking a lot pills, of these pills, Vicodin pills and stuff pills like that. Pills will fuck like, you up. If, if, you yeah. do it, if you start doing pills and then you want to stop, you have withdrawals and then you start like getting mm -hmm. sick. And then if you're an athlete too, you're going to have a, a game, you know, you feel like a little, sick. you're hurt, you take the pills. Now getting off the pills, you're going to be in it's more worse. pain. That's yeah. Like, like Phil Jackson was saying how he, uh, he, he, was take, he was using weed. Uh, Steve Kerr, when he had his back surgery, yeah. he was saying that he was using weed. Fucking uh, Chauncey Billups said that Everyone. he prefers his when he was playing. I seen course, the Chauncey Billups. Yeah, he said yeah. he preferred his teammates to smoke because they were more fo more focused on the game plan yeah. and they played better. And it can't be that serious. It's becoming legal in like how many? Exactly. States. I just can't wait till it's legal in the city. People are starting to make money now. That's also, what bit, I can't like wait. everybody needs to I mean, be quiet about that. Every, weed what stuff. it really comes down it's to is taxing stuff. it. I think. I feel like that's what the big. They want to make money. They want to make money off it. You know. Alcohol, there it was. There was prohibition where you couldn't drink I and all that. Mm -hmm. And then they made it happen. Now they tax alcohol, so it's like I it's agree. the same thing with weed. They don't want people to make pure mm -hmm. profit off of anything. All right, but those who don't know, um, Nick Caution is one of is a rap member of the group Pro Era, mm -hmm. the movement Beast the Coast, movement, the yeah, real Definitely. independent movement, very, very independent, very, like very. too independent, right? Yeah, that's one of the best lyricists in the city, in my opinion. Thank I you, say thank that. You. I appreciate mean, that. So, um, I did a little research on you, and mm -hmm. I found out that you're Italian, right? Italian and Jewish. Italian and Jewish. Like, yeah. how did you learn about rap music? Like, what was like the first rap song you heard, mm -hmm. like, to make you even? Because I know Italians, like, I don't think like they're listening to rap music if that's yeah. the first thing that Word. is in your ear. Like, so I grew up in this neighborhood, Mill Basin, mm -hmm. and uh, this is it's Brooklyn, but it's not like traditional Brooklyn. Like, I didn't even know that until I started really seeing what Brooklyn is like. There's no trains really here. And it's like, you basically see the same people. You know, it's, it, it is mm -hmm. what it is. Mm -hmm. But um, I went to school. My, I have an older brother. He's like six years older than me, five years older than me. Mm -hmm. And he would just put me on to stuff. So he put me on to wrestling. He put me on to, I don't even know, wrestling. Probably even like the Backstreet Boys. Like, I was listening to Backstreet Boys. All that, and then he put me on to Eminem, and I actually remember it very like vividly. I I listened to um, Millennium was the Backstreet Boys album, mm -hmm. and Eminem was coming out, mm -hmm. and I was like, I would I would always get them confused. I was like, Yo, you ever you heard that new rapper Millennium? Like I would talk to my <laughs> friends, and they're like, Who's Millennium? And I'm like, I don't know. He's he's white. He's a white guy. He has blonde hair. And then I started realizing it. Like I heard uh, my name is that that was cool. And then I was, I liked rap, but then when I saw 8 Mile, it kind of oh, just like... that, like, yeah, I like love this? Yeah, like, he had, he had the hoodie on, the Eminem movie, 8 Mile. No, yeah, 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 yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about, uh -huh. And, like, him battling, like, we would battle in the schoolyard at school, and then it just, I, I got a love for it, and then uh, 50 Cent and G-Unit, 
then the internet started getting popping, so I was listening to Tupac. Yeah, YouTube, yeah. Yeah, and then I was going through everything. Like once the internet came out, it was over. Like I had, I still have a collection of CDs. I had like Mystical. I had, I had everything. How did the idea come about for Basin? Basin, all right, so Basin, the video you were talking about, right? Yeah, definitely. So I was watching um, Fight Club, and I, Fight Club is in the sample. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's one of my favorite movies as well. And that camera that's like in front of you, it's called like a Snorri camera or some shit. Like if you see in the beginning, wherever I'm walking, it's mm -hmm. like following me. So I wanted the whole video to be like waking up in and out of loops. So it's like in and out of dreams. So like everything's a cycle, like if you heard in the mm -hmm. beginning. And it's kind of like what I was referring it to is this neighborhood, specifically what I grew up on. Everyone was doing pills and shit. They were doing, you know, fucked up shit. Everyone was fucked up. So From was, like what age? Sorry to cut you off. Like What, from how old? When yeah, I like when did people it, start doing pills? When I was like 13, 14, I started. They was doing pills at 13, 14 years old? Yeah. I mean, I was 13, 14, and the older kids were doing it, but then when I got older, the younger kids started doing it. So when I was like 17, 18, like the 13, 14 year olds were doing it. Yeah. Popping yeah. pills like Zannies and stuff? Worse than Zannies, like blues, it's like Oxys. Damn. Yeah, like they, well, weren't, they weren't even just popping them, from, they, were, they were smoking them, they were sniffing them, like. Well, you could smoke, wait, time out, you could smoke yeah. and sniff them shits? Yeah, it's like... I knew you could sniff pills, but I didn't know you could smoke You can't, like, roll it in a blunt. I, I mean, maybe you could, but, like, you That's gotta, like... That's crazy. It's like some... Yeah, it's yeah like I didn't some, know that. That's bugged out. But, um, continue. So, just, like... I, I remember when Sticks came into the neighborhood, too. I was, like, 15. Sticks or Xanax, whatever. Mm -hmm. And weed was, like, whatever. It was, like, people were smoking, and then they were, like, oh, we got Sticks. And I was, like, what the fuck is a stick? I was, I thought it was, like, a pixie stick. And it was like powder. Oh yeah, that's what I thought yeah. it was. That's yeah. what I thought it was. And then I saw I like those. it was Xanax, whatever. And I started realizing, and then it just evolved. Like once the Xanaxes were whatever, then you want to go to the next thing. So a lot of the kids who who like fuck with that type of shit, who fuck, yeah, mm -hmm. well the sticks or whatever, mm -hmm. they don't really. I mean, so it depends. Like it depends because there's there's kids that will will smoke, fucking take pills and do everything but then some kids who are like really into the shit just do that they don't they don't smoke weed some some kids who take pills hate weed because it makes them feel weird it's like it's like nah we i feel like paranoid on weed when mm -hmm. when they take like blues or sticks or whatever they're like they feel normal because that's what they're used to so then the weed will just like that uh, Nah, it, it depends. I understand. But then understand. there's some kids that will do everything. They'll just be like, we whatever it they'll is. They'll smoke. I'll put it. They'll do the zans. They'll, they'll have a fucking. They'll, they'll drink. Uh, have you ever like pop pills and stuff? Nah, I never popped any pill. The only life. pill I ever popped was Addy. Like I stopped at like. The, and that and that's, and that's not, not even, even as considered, bad. Right? Yeah. But but it could like the more the more you do any of that shit like the the prescription shit that shit will fuck you up because you build a tolerance and then you take more and then. Uh, you know? At least you're very strong willed that like you never yeah. did anything I like that it. and you're in this neighborhood. Yeah, I so. seen it I seen it at a young age and I was I was like really young, I was like thirteen, fourteen and I was like, What the fuck? Like maybe if I was older, like, yo, let's just do it. Alright. I seen it very young and I seen so many different stages of people go through that shit. Mm -hmm. Like I seen it being fun and then it being like their wow. lives getting fucked, fucked up. up and stuff, right? That's yeah. the shit that's going on with Lean right now. Yo, that's the yeah. shit that's going on with everything. Like before, all the like Xanax and Poppin' Zans was cool. Like I, I seen it. So when it started coming in the rap game, I'm like, yo. Yeah. This is and no people good. be thinking that they're like real live rappers. Like rappers are rich. Do you yeah, understand? Exactly. They got the yeah. chance to yeah. sit here and do lean and if bullshit. they want to. And bullshit. Exactly. Like you're fucking up your life. That's the thing. People try and live the lifestyle I'm before they have the lifestyle. It's like yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. They try and like and that's yeah, what fuck. Insta. That's what Insta that's do. What everything, thing, yeah. everything, everything. You, that's what the snap story. You're yeah, gonna right? take five stories a day of like the highlights of yo. Everyone getting this. Yeah, yo, I, like, yeah, gang, gang. And then after that, it's what high. are you doing? I agree. Um, but did, to each his own. Did you always see yourself becoming a rapper? Definitely not. When I was younger, I wanted to act. That was like my... I was like, oh, I'm gonna be an actor. That's, I didn't even think about it. It was just what it was. And uh, I acted... I even went to Murrow for acting. 
Joey went to Merle yeah. for acting. That's how we met. We met in school on some acting shit. Merle is a predominantly acting school. It's uh, it it's like a art school. So there's a there's like a literal there's an art program. There's a singing program. There's an acting program. There's it's very artsy. Yeah, I have a cousin of mine that went Basquiat, there. He's artsy. Basquiat went there. Oh, Basquiat went yeah, to, yeah, um, to Merle. Merle. Yeah, that's very interesting. Basquiat I didn't went that. there. Um, and uh, when I got there in ninth grade. Acting still. Then tenth grade, me and Trevor. I, I've known Trevor for forever, and we were never really like that close. And then me, him, and another friend, they were doing music, and like they knew I rapped. And then they they brought me in to like come rap. And then Trevor brought a mic into his studio, mm -hmm. and we just started recording. Like so, Trevor always had a studio since high school. Not always, but then he started it when I was in like tenth grade. So tenth grade, Atlas Studios. Yeah, it, it was like that's pretty young though. Yeah, yeah. Tenth grade, I was like fifteen. Tenth grade, yeah. yeah. And I was writing in ninth grade. I, like ninth grade, I started writing more. I remember I was in a guitar class, and I just remember writing a whole rap on the back of my guitar paper, and I was like, the fuck. Like I, I always wrote, but I didn't take it serious because mm -hmm. I'm like this little white kid from Mill Bass, and I'm like, ah, oh, like it's cool, yeah. but I'm gonna I'm gonna act. I'm gonna do that, and then. Um, I met Steez. Like I, I just met everyone in the school, and it just like happened. Like I started rapping with him. I dropped my mixtape. They heard the shit, and just like it was like wildfire. Like everything just started falling. It into started place. falling into place. Yeah. How did you guys gain an audience? Like you guys gained an audience from very young, cause yeah. all of mm -hmm. this you're telling me was like at High 17, yeah, 16 17, years yeah. old. And like, Joey's younger than me. Joey's a year younger than me. Wait, so how old are you? I'm 22. Joey's 21. What? Yeah. yeah. So so when I was in. 10th grade he was a freshman i met joey in all right so we were in acting right mm -hmm. so we had to take a dance class like we had to take a screen dance class mm -hmm. and there was a dance show at the end of the year and my freshman year the older kids they choreographed like a wrestling match mm -hmm. so it was like some wwe shit mm -hmm. and then the next year they let me choreograph it with some other kid and joey was part of my group so i choreographed joey mm -hmm. like so that's how I met Joey. Like I met him as Jovan, whatever. He was the young like acting kid, and we just knew each other. And he like did music. We didn't even really talk about it. We both knew he did music, but we were just cool. And then the older we got, we always chilled with each other. We always knew what was good. And then Steez, and then it just it just made sense. Like it just, it just they started. They had their group. I had my group. I brought Steez here to rap. Steez oh, wow. did like most of his shit here at a certain point in time. And then they made the pro era. I wasn't even in the pro era at first, and then like they were like, "Oh, you know, you're you're like the unofficial member of pro era, blah blah." blah. And then like out like in a matter of time, they were just like, "You're in pro era." Okay, so pro era was already established in a sense it was before a, you like before they already joined, had an yeah. audience. Yeah, well, it was it was buzzing because they dropped Survival Tactics, which mm -hmm. was Joey and Steve's. They dropped it in the summer of like 2011 or mm -hmm. something like that, and then. February 2012, they dropped the video, and mm -hmm. once the video dropped, it was like it was over. It, mm -hmm. I, I don't even know what happened. Like it just dropped, and then it just blew up. So you can't even really tell me how you guys gained a a, a buzz. It like, was that video. It was definitely was that survival video? tactics. So yeah. it, it dropped on YouTube, and then dropped it went on crazy. YouTube, and then just went crazy. Yeah, and there wasn't like that. There was like they dropped um the sex tape, the first sex tape, which. It was a mixtape that we did on Valentine's Day, yeah. but I wasn't on the first one. And that like did well, mm -hmm. but it didn't do great. It did like cool. And then Survival Tiger Shop and then Cause I I I, re I specifically remember Joey had a video on World Star. I forgot it was before Survival Tactics. I forgot the name of it though. You, you remember before like rem Survival? I don't I don't know if he had anything before Survival. Cause survival taxes was with Steve, oh, right? Oh well, well, he had he had some like freestyle shit. Yeah, it was like yeah. But I, that shit was not on World Star. Like they, that's yeah, the thing. Like he's no, not not that shit. Uh, You're talking about like the I the mean freestyle, like fifteen year old yeah, freestyle. Nah, he, yeah. I could have. Yo, didn't he have something in Stony we were watching? I got enough shit on my mind, so I don't need to be stressing the shot. Fine. One day I'm trying to have a wife and kids. Yeah, and then like I could, cause I remember I saw him on a uh, World Star. Yeah. And it was like, yo, young rapping kid, real nice, whatever. And then it, I saw some Bible be. tactics. Word. And then that's when I was like, oh shit! I was like, yo, there's a group like yeah. I didn't know about Steez, I just knew about Joey. Yeah. I'm in Marty McFly mode, so tell him that the future's back. Riding on hoverboards, wiping out motherboards. Stop spitting fire, cause my motherfucking lung is scorched. King Arthur when he swung his sword, a King Arthur. I ain't even use a pen in like a month before. <laughs> 
I had a hard time writing yeah. letters. And then I just remember survival tactics just taking off. That shit just blew yeah. up. Yeah. Because there was nothing really like that in a minute. At all. And it was some New York shit. Like at that time, the only other New York thing was ASAP. And that was it. There was yeah. no like new mm -hmm. New York shit at all. And ASAP was completely different. They were like on the trail. And then we were on the, you know, it's conscience. Two, yeah, like the yeah. pretty New York. Yeah. So when did you figure out she was nice? Cause I feel like, <laughs> <laughs> nah, cause I, That's I feel, a real question. nah, cause I feel like, like you know, sometimes you're good at something. Yeah. But I feel like a lot of times you just may not see yourself in that world. Like yo, mm -hmm. I could get paid for this. Word. Other people Word. might think I'm actually dope. But when did you know, like yo, I'm nice, and it's like maybe somebody might fuck with it, maybe they mm -hmm. might, but. Even if they don't, I know I'm nice. Yeah. When, did, when did you come to that point? Well, I always thought I was nice, like, when I was recording here, but some of my first tracks were trash. Like, I did a Lemonade Freestyle. That shit was <laughs> the trash. Gucci song? Yeah, that shit was trash. <laughs> I don't even know what I was saying. Like, yeah, I, I, I was saying crazy shit. Like, I was, mm -hmm. like, 16 just saying wild shit. But one of the first things I recorded, though, I recorded to Ransom by Drake. Yeah, I remember that. And that was, like, one of the first things I recorded it, was that the first thing I recorded? It was the first thing you released. I think that was the first thing I recorded. It might have been. Well, I recorded yeah, that, sure. and then I recorded like a great track, and then everything after was like not that great. And then mm -hmm. like I, I was like back and forth, but like once I did that, I'm like, all right, I'm nice. And then I knew I was nice, and then I joined Pro Era, and it like made me better. Because I, mm -hmm. I, I was going against like good rappers. I was going against Joey Steve. Like I was like, yo, I, I can't be whack and, mm -hmm. and be in this group, so. I think one of the moments I realized I was nice is on Suspect, which was the um, on 99, yeah, yeah, on Joey's on, mixtape. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, uh, just my whole verse, like people fucked with that verse. Like I was like, I'm doubling my spot, no Louisiana purchase. Like I was just yeah. saying like, just stupid like witty lines and people was like in the comments were fucking with me and I'm like, yo, like I'm pretty nice. Let me just keep doing this and then just take it further. Were your parents always supportive? Because I know sometimes when it comes to that point where you want to try to pursue something that yeah. may not be so, you know, regular in yeah. terms of like being a doctor, lawyer, whatever. Like, were they uh, supportive my, of it? My mom at first was like, she wasn't unsupportive, but she's a mom. So she was just like, I told her, I'm like, yo, I don't want to go to college. Like, this is what I want to do. And she's like, no, no, you got to go to college, blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah. you know, just being a mom. And then my dad was just like, oh, like, if this is what you want to do, do this shit, you know? You got to just fully go for it. Because if, if you got one foot in and one foot out, it's not it's not really going to happen. Because, mm. you know, other shit is going to happen. You got to, like, fully go for this shit. You got to, like, fully put your fucking whole body through the door. Mm. And then close the door. Like, you, you can't be halfway in. That's good That advice. was real. Yeah, that was real. Yeah, that was real. That was real. Yeah. Um. So, I mean, this may be a little touchy or a little emotional. I know your mm -hmm. father passed away. Yeah. Is he still a source of inspiration for your music? Yeah, for sure. I mean, he was like, towards the release of Disguise the Limit, like he heard the whole thing. He, you know, that was like, he was involved in the whole process. Wow. So, just knowing what that was and like knowing what that whole process was like. I know that he's was proud of what I did, mm. and I and I feel like I'm getting better from that. Like I'm getting just yeah. you know sharper. So it's never like oh would he be proud? It's like let me just try and get even nicer because like mm. I know what he would like. Let me just try and fucking exceed that shit. And I and you know I I was blessed with the last memories that he was like very proud of what I was doing, and wow. he was like yo like I have like emails from him just like this is what you gotta do like. Everything else is whatever, like, you got to focus on this. Like, this is, like, some real shit. It's not, it's not, like, some bubblegum, like, oh, I'm going to be a rapper. I'm going to make money. I'm going to fuck bitches. It's, like, I'm trying to, like, really do this shit. Like, for real, for real. And it's it's deeper than, than all that shallow shit. So he's definitely an inspiration. I, I think about what he would be proud of and just try to get better than wherever I was at. What exactly happened, if you don't mind me asking? Um, I mean, he had, like, a fucked up, um, when he was younger, he had something wrong with his heart, and he had a surgery when he was, like, 13, and they put, mm -hmm. like, a graph on his aorta or, like, one of his valves. Mm -hmm. So, 
that was like 50, he was like 50, no, 64 when he passed away. So it's 50 years later. It's like, that's 50 years of fucking wear and tear on it. So it was breaking. You can only imagine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they, they did the the surgery and they fixed it. And then, I mean, I, I, we really don't know what happened in the, like a couple of days after the surgery. It happened, so. And we didn't want to do like a another surgery. No, nah, we didn't do. We didn't want to do like an autopsy. We just, you know, left it like that. Yes. What else are you gonna really do at that point? I'm still mourning from the pain. No, it just gets harder anyway. At the start of every day, I believe I'll overcome it and find a way. You encourage what I am. You inspire the escape. You inspire the escape. Things that are just ordinary, like going to the store, just doing shit with someone. Is, is, that is, shit you'll miss. That shit that in a day, that right? shit could be gone, and that shit you take for granted. I, I was even telling Brandon, like, mm -hmm. we there's gonna it's reality. There's gonna be a time like our both our parents are yeah. not gonna be here anymore. Yeah. It's like you gotta cherish the moments while they're still here. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You gotta tell somebody that you love them while you still can. Um, yeah. I have like one more um sad question, and then like mm -hmm. we're gonna. Continue. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's cool. Um, what was Capital Steez like? Uh, he was just a, a leader, you know, just a innovative thinker. You know, he was he put me onto a lot of game too. Like, he he made the pro era. Like, pro era was that was Steez. That then, was Steez. Yeah, like pro era was Steez. He put us all together, and then Joey just blew up, and like. You know, it was obviously Joey reps Pro Era, but like Pro Era was Steez's foundation, and you know, like a lot of the shit that we knew about, Steez put us onto, and then we just, you know, we grew as individuals. So he was just the like the mastermind behind the whole shit. Did you guys see it coming? We didn't see it coming, but like he was just, you know, towards towards the end, he was just, you know. A little different but it was we didn't really see it coming it was definitely like out of nowhere we, out of we dropped the we dropped the project like two days before it happened three days before it happened mm -hmm. and we had the event we were at stussy that shit is on youtube too and then that was like that was the last day i seen him the day our our mixtape came out the day peep came and out. that was like the end of that yeah it's always um it's so crazy because it's like a similar story what you're saying with asap yams yeah like the leader the founder like the you know mm -hmm. yeah i mean it's it's fucked up and it's it's crazy too because i see a lot of like parallels between rocky and joey too like i've, I've been around both of them and they're both oh. like similar people like Sim seriously yeah like they they act very alike that's crazy. And it's crazy too, cause like Yams died, Steez died, and now and like they were, Rocky and Joey are both like the, Who, the main. Who's the Ferg? Who's the Ferg? <laughs> I don't know. You don't even have to answer that. I'm yeah. just joking. <laughs> but we got Nick and Knight coming soon. <laughs> what I was saying is that um, I noticed that Pro Ever had an amazing year this year mm -hmm. with the whole devastated. Yeah, devastated was huge. Um, Kirk Knight just dropped something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was lis I listened to I heard the freestyle with him and um Which with Joey Joey and it, it's CJ recent. or no 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 it was CJ who is it CJ Fly oh CJ, CJ Fly, Fly. Yeah, CJ, CJ Fly. just dropped yeah and I mean yeah CJ just fly I'm um, um, dropped with um with with Joey yeah that freestyle was dope yeah Joey body that shit mm -hmm. did y'all see what was gonna happen with um Devastated did y'all know it was gonna uh, be a I radio? mean he played it for me he played it for me in the studio and. I didn't really like it at first. Like it was rough. Like I, I got where he was going with it, and then once I heard the the fi like the more final versions, I was like, I, like I, I get it. Like it makes sense. And then once like I really heard it like out on the radio and like in the in like a club or in a party, it made a lot of sense. But when I first heard it, he played me three songs, and that was one of them. And I think the other two are on his album. And Devastated was my least favorite out of the three. Oh, Devastate was your least my favorite? My least favorite, yeah. So the fans picked that, basically. I mean, he, he just pushed it. It was it was the one that, it made sense. But, like, his album is amazing. It's really, really good. Like, I don't want to, like, get anyone's expectations up, but it's very good. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, like, very well put together. It's, All right. It's, yeah. Definitely, definitely. I've always wanted to ask this. Um, I was a fan of the Pro Ever Cypher. Mm. Uh, of course, parts one and two. Um, yeah. 
But I'm not gonna front. I felt like your freestyle always stood out to me. Mm. Like of course, you know everybody body their shit. But I just thought it was kind of dope how you freestyle to deport them. Like, yeah, what I know, made you I choose know. that beat? Yeah, yeah, deport them. <laughs> Yo, I think I got a cavity, man. For real though. Hey, 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 check, check. When I die, I'm probably lit. I blame the ounce though, well that's cool Cause everybody bad got a zip It's thick bitch, don't doubt it I'm lost until I found myself and routed my allowance Pounds up on you cowards I'm a cum predator, no I'm a cum predator Run through all your spot until you never spotted anymore Never followed anymore, Twitter swallowed everyone Really made you think you get to popping on that cyber war Cause they were playing, they were playing beats And I was like, uh, Static was just going through shit And he like played deport them and then just went to the next one quick I'm like, nah, I'll go back and he's like, you want to rap on this? I'm like, yes. Let me rap on <laughs> I think that's Brandon's favorite freestyle. Yeah, you know how many times he brings it up? You gotta, you yeah. gotta call it. Up, you got I said, yeah, yeah, do port. Yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> sometimes you just gotta do some weird, like, next shit, and then it's like, that can start a wave. Like, how do you feel about the music industry at overall? Right now? Yeah, because you seem like it's like whatever. It's, it's cool. Up. I mean, it, it's it, it is what it is. Like, I, I don't, I don't, I don't even really hate on like all the the shit that's going on or like the fucking people call it mumble rap or whatever like i i don't really fuck with it but like i get it so it, you don't like trap music at all no i do i do but I'm, I'm just saying like i don't it's it's different it's like a different world like i don't want to hear conscious music all the time and i don't want to hear trap music all the time but like you have to have a balance you have to have a balance and so like there, what's your way, top five 2016 top five top five of 2016 yeah. like rappers yeah um not in order uh i like travis i do fuck with travis yeah travis is nice i like travis um drake has got to be in it yeah. two, your last two we, we like we jump in and out of conversation mm -hmm. Your wait, last wait. two. My last two. Oh, my last two. It's like. Is that the fuck is she talking about right now? <laughs> yeah, I was like, my last two. <laughs> the, you said the top five of the year? Yeah. What did I say? Um, um, Schoolboy. Schoolboy, Travis, Drake. Said Drake. Um, I guess Kendrick. I like Untitled. I like that. So, alright, so Kendrick, number two. No yeah, one more. more. I mean, I, I guess Kanye. Not not number. He's not my number one, but like, I guess those are my top five listened to of the year. If okay. that makes sense. Yeah. Travis, Drake, Kendrick, Kanye, and Schoolboy. Do you listen yeah. to any like underground that we should know about? Uh, Denzel Curry. Yeah, he's Brooklyn. nice. I, I um, feel like like we know him kind of. He's the man. He's like the coolest dude I ever met mm -hmm. in, in like the rap game. Mm -hmm. Ever. He's just like. He's like my brother, like, every time. Like, I see him fucking just do stupid, like, fake Jedi shit up. <laughs> like, we just, that's my dude. Denzel Curry. I'm, I can't, I guess he's underground, but he has ultimate. That shit is, that shit yeah. blew up. Yeah, but, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I like him. Yeah, him. Fuck it. <laughs> Denzel Curry. He said, fuck it. So uh, I, uh, go ahead, go ahead, Brandon. So how do you feel, like, how would you describe your maturation as an artist? Because I feel like in the beginning, when especially, like, as a group, pro mm -hmm. era in general, when you guys came in, I feel like, for one, I grew with you guys. Like, yeah. I feel like I got older, yeah. and my interests also changed as well. Exactly. And I feel like you guys had certain joints where it's like, yo, you know, I went to school high, blah, blah. But, like, especially with your new project, yeah. I feel like you've really delve deeper into like you know your feelings social issues maybe even mm -hmm. so like how would you describe your, your so, maturation when we came up it was like we always kept it um where we were aware of what was going on like socially yeah. but it was more about just rapping like it was more just like we we had like all like the the other issues and the other like underlines in it but like for me specifically it was like I'm just trying to rap, like I'm trying to, you know, have a hot verse and, and just body shit. And then that was just to get my, to get like into the picture. And then I was always saying once I made my own project, I'm going to be more per, because like my first project when I was 17, The Pursuit was, uh, it was like way more personal. It was, you know, there was a bunch of shit on it. And then I figured when I'm doing this like on a bigger scale, like people are actually watching, I just need to really show and prove. Like, mm. I don't want to give you too much right away. I want you to come in first, like, oh, he's nice. And then once you come in, it's like, oh, all right, he got like things to say. So I did that. 
And then the older I got, the more, like, I, I, just, I don't curse as much sometimes. Like, when I was really young, I was just like, fucking fuck, like, mad <laughs> cursing, stupid bitch. Like, everything was that. And then it's like, you want to you wanna be, like, appealing and you want to you wanna be able to, like, listen back and be like, ah, this is, this is, like, this is nice. I like this shit. Mm. And, yeah, I think right now, too, like, just the, the main maturing I see in myself is my process recording. Now it's like, I used to write all my shit before, get there, and just do it word for word. Now it's like, I might write four bars, go in the booth, and then just freestyle the rest and like punch it in. I might just rap first and then try and make a beat over it. Like there's, there's all different styles. I might rap and be with like someone else, like Kirk or someone like, yo, I'll rap these bars, you do this. Then I'll come back in and it would, you know, it's, I try and get creative with the process now. So, no, sorry, but I just need to ask, like, so how does production play into that? Because I'm not going for I never would have ever thought I'd see you on the Metro Boomin' Beat. Yeah, well, yeah. so so production, um, well, the Metro shit, that just happened by chance because we were in uh, Cali, mm. and Joey was doing the shit with Herb. They, they, yeah, they had yeah. that song, and that was, like, through Red Bull. I don't even know what, what, I think it was through Red Bull. It was some shit like that, and... We were just in the studio with him and he was just making beats and he made the beat. We didn't do it that day. I was like, yo, Joey, just send me the shit. If we know if I didn't do it, it probably would have just gotten like lost in the files and I just did it here, sent it to Joey and that was just it. I thought it was just necessary to do something a little different because no one ever seen that from Pro Era. I don't even yeah. think that's one of like my favorite songs on yeah, um yeah. When you take like that, Word. and I remember, popping. I remember Joey saying that too. Like, I think it was maybe Breakfast Club, mm -hmm. and I it probably was Charlamagne saying some shit like "Yo, boom bap," and he was like, "Nah, but watch." Like, he was like, "Not only myself, but the rest of Pro Era, we're gonna be doing other shit. Like, yeah. you're gonna see us with other producers. It's not just gonna yeah. be boom bap forever." And, and and it's just like evolving too, cause like we were young, we were really young. So if, if you look, and you at, guys are still young, and we're still yeah, young, still so young, it's very like, young. It's, you can't really put someone in a box when they're like 17, 18 doing music. Cause like, look at like anyone's music when they're young and, and thinking, think about just holding them to that for the rest of their life. Like that's, that's some, that's whack. We yeah. all grow. We like, all grow. We, we, the, you're not even the same person you were last month. Like for sure, five minutes for ago sure. sometimes. For sure. And it's like with growth, especially with us, cause there's more eyes on us. Cause our, like our fan base is very like, yo, like you guys, you guys did this for us like they they're very like into us so when we do other shit they they feel like what the fuck is this like this isn't what we we like pro era for like we yeah. like it for the yeah. for this yeah. one vibe but i think the the goal is to just do it tastefully and do it so it's still still pro era it's, it's still pro era and it's still quality it's not like some bullshit do you think it's like better when you go in a booth and then you freestyle or it's like, sometimes it's more, I mean, it could be frustrating because I also hold myself to like a standard. So if I'm saying something that's like not that good, I'll know. Even if so, even if like Trevor or someone's like, yo, it's, it's dope. I'll be like, eh, like I'm, mm -hmm. I'm very skeptical of myself, but it is good for like natural shit. Cause you just, when I freestyle, you just do different flows. Like you ride the beat more than like trying to get your words out. Mm -hmm. Cause if you write something to a beat, sometimes we'll put verses that we wrote to a different beat so the the verse doesn't really fit the beat as much as like writing to the beat so when you freestyle you really like ride the beat so what is one of the biggest misconceptions of the rap game in your um, opinion of course biggest misconceptions uh hmm. probably that everybody like all rappers have mad bread because mm. there's a lot of pet rappers that don't have a lot of bread mm. and they make it seem like they do I, I could honestly believe that a lot of rappers don't have a lot of money is it maybe it's not a misconception but like that's that's definitely true because a lot of people like will front like they do and they they just it's just not there it's like yeah, yeah like i'm a rapper like what do you think is like the reason for lack of money more so. I mean, non-active rappers, if they're not really, like, doing that much shit, if they're not as active and they're just, like, talking about Like what Brandon shit. was saying, you gotta feed the beast more yeah. so? I mean, it's, it's shows, it's like, you get paid for shows, you get paid for features, you get paid for merch, like, there's, there's so many things you get paid for, and it also depends on your deal, like, you, you might be getting these 
these things happening and you're not even seeing the money from it. That's like the that's the thing too with the majors and shit. Right now with the whole three sixty deal they, going around. They, yeah, they they fuck fucking people. people over. And another misconception is like if you sign a million dollar deal, like people will read, oh, this so and so signed million dollar deal, whatever dollar deal, that could be like a seven album deal, which is mm. like that's that's slavery deal. Like, yeah, <laughs> like, um, that's terrible. Yeah. Seven the albums, albums for one million. Yeah. Now you saying that like, are you kidding me right now? Like, like imagine doing people don't even do seven albums. People don't life. even do three. Yeah, like four. Three, you're lucky. You do yeah, three to four albums. You're like, lucky. That's yeah. That's good. Kinda yeah. Yeah. So, so the fucking rap game fucked up. Okay. How was like your first tour? How old were you when you were on your first tour? What was like the craziest experience? Like give me a quick little... Um, I was like 18. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah. I think I was 18. I might have been 19. I think I just turned 19. It was the Beast Coast tour. It was uh, us, Flapper Zombies, and the Underachievers. Dope as well. It, it was just crazy. I mean... Craziest experience. Did like your dad come or your parents? He, my dad came to the Connecticut show. He actually. Oh, but they weren't with no, you. No, like no, the, no, oh, no, oh, no, okay, no, okay, no, okay, no, okay, no, okay. No, okay. No, <laughs> I'm no, like, because no. you're 18. I'm like, I'm wondering yeah, what they're saying. Like, no, you can't go. I'm coming with you. Actually, what happened was um, I was in college for my first semester of Brooklyn College. Mm -hmm. And the shit was already popping at that time. So it was like hard for me to do both because I was like, yo. We were trying to finish the Pro Era album and go to school. And go to school. So like I was going to school from the studio. Like I would sleep in the studio and just go to school in the morning. Just travel Damn. in the morning, because the studio was on like Forty Seventh and Seventh. So, and I and I lived here at the time. So from there to oh, here yeah, that's crazy. at night, yeah, that's crazy. It didn't happen. So, <laughs> so um. Fuck, wait, what was that? Oh, wait, what were we talking about? The, the tour. The tour. Yeah, tour. I, I, so, yeah. I, no, no, I got it. I got it. <laughs> so, so we went, I went to school, and then I told my mom, I'm like, I'm only going a semester. I, I told her that for a while, too. And she's like, no, you're going to school. You're going to school. And then my manager at the moment, Johnny Shipes, had emailed me. And like it was like such an informal email. He's like, oh, I want to sign you and blow you up. Like, like, it was just like some, like... I'm like, oh, word? <laughs> like, I was mad hype, but it was just, like, mad regular to him. And then I, I sent it to my mom, and she was like, what? what? And then they spoke. <laughs> then they spoke, and she's like, all right, you can take one semester off to go on tour. And then after that semester, she's like, you know you're going back. I'm like, nah. Nah, it's And then so she just smart. never asked again. She she already knew what it was. But nah, that was, that was all us. It was all pro era. Um, Joey's, like... This guy, Riddy, I think he's Quan's cousin. He was our, like, day-to-day -day manager. He's, like, 30-something, but he was... He let us do whatever the fuck we want. So. Oh, yeah. yeah, so it's, like, whatever. Yeah, it was cool, though. It was, it was a good time. It was, like, it was a lot of us. There was 12 bunks, and there was, like, 15 of us. Yeah. Oh. Can you tell yeah. me, like, one crazy story that, like, happened? Crazy story on that tour. Or, like, one, like, uh, or, the first yeah. thing, any, like, any crazy, crazy story. story, like, on Just, a tour. Just, uh, all right, well, one time we, uh, we did shrooms on a different tour. And we just, it was a day off, so we just did it on the bus, not even knowing where we were going to, like, end up. Uh -huh. like, I think we were just going to go to the hotel or some shit. And we had this crazy bus driver, his name was JP, and he was just like, y'all motherfuckers crazy, like, <laughs> like, he talked like that, he, he was mad funny though, so we pull, we pull up, and we get out of the fucking bus, and we're, we're on like this lot, we're on like a crazy lot with all other tour buses, and we're like, where, where are we, and he's like, oh, I'm here, like, we're gonna change buses, because they're like, the oil leak, there's something wrong with the bus, so we're like, alright, we walk outside the bus, I swear to God, shooting star, just goes and we're on shrooms and we're like what the fuck shooting star goes off then we're walking around the the lot and there's like a garage like an open garage with like wax figures of like oh, nah. elvis oh nah. <laughs> no is this like nah. this was real I, there's, there's footage no there's footage there's footage oh, is it there's the shoes footage. is it the shoes no nah, huh? it was crazy it's like wax figures of the elvis Texas there's like little tricycles set. and like of like a like a mustang like a pristine mu like it was just it was like bugged out and then we're in florida so it's like eight of us and 
there's like a whole field and there's mad houses. So Florida, like you could have a gun. Nah, boy. You could like you're allowed to. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. And, have the right to carry. Yeah, and we all we all have hoodies on and like Joey's like, yo, let's go run across the field. Hell no. And then and then everyone's <laughs> like, no. yeah, that would be sick. And then the guy JP is like. Y'all motherfuckers are crazy. Like, I'll get your ass killed over here with the hoodies. And you go fuck it. Like, it was, yeah. That shit was crazy. But that whole time, and then and then we got back in the bus, and we like we just started fighting, like on some just super dramatic, like <laughs> it was just it was fucking doing crazy. what guys do. Yeah. Right? And, then, and then like at one point, I think uh, this is on online too. <laughs> in the back, we were opening the door, so like we would close it and open it and every time we opened it like Joey was there and he was just doing some other shit so he was like <laughs> some music was playing so he's like bumping we closed it and then he was like in the other seat bumping then he was like upside down <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was mad funny I could, I could show you guys after but that's not the craziest story but that was a pretty crazy story yeah. seeing like the wax figures that shit was fucking I don't even know and especially on. you're off the shit so and like, we had no this... idea that we were gonna be there we were like think, thinking we are going to the hotel we were uh, on a fucking lot. Oh, oh shit! Wait, was one more part. <laughs> then, uh, Diamond Lewis, he, we changed buses at this point or whatever, and he's like, I, I need my blanket from the other bus. He's like, I need my blanket. He needed it, so we get off the bus to go get his blanket, and there's two dogs, just outside. Stray dogs? I have no idea. What I guess they might have been like the dogs from on the lot. Like they yeah. could have been friendly, but they were just outside, like. No. Like looking at us, <laughs> and then it was just crazy. We didn't go back outside. We went back. <laughs> Yo, dogs, tough. Yeah, dogs. If, if, I, if, I'm not, dog, if I don't yeah. really oh, have yeah. access of like being able to kick you or something, yeah, like <laughs> I'm not messing with you. Dogs like, and there's no owner around. Yeah, nah. It's over. It's over. Oh, that's all you gotta hear, and then it's over. Exactly. So this is a wrap. Yo, we want to thank you for coming through, Nick. We really appreciate it. I appreciate it. No basic legend. Hey. You know what I'm saying? Hey. Forever yeah. as finest. We, we love it. Yeah. Flesh. Thank you for coming through, man. We really appreciate it. Thank you. I'll see this you soon. Cool. Hopefully you come back. Ah, I will. I'm always here. All right. No problem. This is, yeah, this is, this is my second home. Ultra your plug. Ultra plug. We out. Fucking bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Gangsta <laughs> <laughs>